In this video, we're going to do a case study of a backup lamp circuit that isn't working. And we're going to use a voltmeter to measure voltage drop in the circuit to try to find the cause of the problem. This is similar to a video that I made previously where we used a test light to find a problem in the same circuit. However, this time the, the problem is different. We'll diagnose it using a different tool. Now, just like in the previous circuit, I want to emphasize as we go over here to the, the wiring diagram, that we always focus on the component that isn't working. Ignore all of the other parts of the circuit for the time being and focus on this component. We need to recognize, in this case, we've got two components that aren't working, but we're going to just stay focused on one and recognize that this light bulb needs to have a power and a ground in order to work. So we can separate this circuit into three parts. The light bulb, the power side of the circuit up here, and the ground side of the circuit down here. And if the light bulb isn't lighting, it's because uh, one of three things is happening. The light bulb has failed. We're not getting the right voltage to the bulb on the power side of the circuit, or we're not getting the right voltage to the bulb on the ground side of the circuit. So we always start there. There are other ways to diagnose. I'm not saying that it's wrong to begin by testing the fuse or testing some other component of the circuit. However, if you want to have a method that is consistently going to get you quickly and accurately to the component that has failed. I would recommend you always start with the component. Okay, so let's jump back over to our, our car here. We've got our voltmeter, we've got our voltmeter leads. We'll just have to pretend that we've got wires that connect these leads to the meter here. And let's just start by hooking up the voltmeter to the battery. Place the red lead on the positive terminal, the black lead on the negative terminal. And it should give us a reading of about 12 volts. That's going to vary just depending on what the voltage of the battery is at the time. So it gives us that reading because there is zero volts here and there's 12.44 volts here. And the meter always reads the difference in voltage between this point and this point. So if I was to put one of these bleeds over here like this, we'd of course get a reading of zero because there is no difference or virtually no difference between the points where these two leads are touching at that point. Okay, so let's start by just checking what kind of voltage we're getting through the light bulbs. In an ideal world, all 12.44 volts that's available here at the battery should get to the light bulbs and not get lost anywhere else in the circuit. That's the principle of voltage drop. So we'll bring over one of our leads here, place the other lead here. We should get a reading of 12.44 volts or slightly less because maybe we've lost just a little bit of voltage through the wires. But let's say that I get a reading of 2.4 volts here. That's a problem. In fact, that explains why the light bulb's not lighting up. This is a 12 volt light bulb and it's going to take a little more voltage than this to make that, that filament glow. Okay, so now we know that there is a problem with getting all the voltage here, but we don't know whether it's on the power side of the circuit, which is this part of the circuit right here, or if the problem is on the ground side of the circuit. The ground side goes from here on the black wire joins the ground circuit for the other bulb and goes to the metal on the car, either the frame or the body or the engine block. And then it transfers through the metal of the car over to where the battery cable itself bolts to the metal on the car. So back up through the negative battery cable and to the negative side. So on one of those two sides of the circuit, we're losing some voltage, maybe even both sides. I don't know. So let's start by checking the power side. So we've got to find a good reference point. So I'm just going to move the negative lead. I like to do this. Let's put the lead, one lead on the positive terminal and one lead on the positive terminal here. We should really have about the same voltage. They're connected to each other. We should really have about the same voltage on both sides. We should get a reading of zero volts. We're very close to that. So we get a reading of 0.02 volts, 20 millivolts. 
that's not a very big issue. We've lost a little bit of voltage along the way through the switches and wires, not enough to be concerned about. So we now know that if this is 12.44 volts, this then is 12.42 volts. We just lost that much. So it looks good. We're not having a problem on this side of the circuit. So now let's move this over. And I do realize some people may say, hey, you're not putting the right leads in the right spots. It doesn't really matter to me whether I have the red lead here or the black lead here. You're going to get the same reading. We just may get a negative sign here in front of our numbers if we set it up so that the, the voltage at the black lead is higher than the voltage at the red lead. Okay, so now on the negative side, I could compare from here to here, and I should get 12 volts. Or, as I would prefer to do it, I'd like to just go from here, the negative battery terminal, to here, because we should have zero volts here. We know we have zero volts here. And we should also have close to zero volts here. So we should get a reading of close to zero. But we don't. We get a reading of 9.8 volts. That tells us that somewhere between this point, through the metal on the car, and up to this point, if we have lost 9.8 volts. So now we know that the problem is in the ground side of the circuit. So let's try to narrow it down. Could the problem be between this point here and this point? Could the problem be between this point here and this point? So we'll come and bring this lead over here to this ground and just check for a difference in voltage between here and here. We should get a reading of zero. We come up here and it still reads 9.8 volts. So that shows us that the loss of voltage happened because we have unwanted resistance somewhere between here and here. If we wanted to move this lead over to here, if it still reads 9.8 volts, we can pretty safely assume that the problem then is in the shared portion of the circuit, which is right here. So this wire needs to be repaired or replaced, and that would help us to fix the problem. Now, before I, before I am certain, I always like to verify, so I'm going to get my multimeter leads out of the way here, put them back away, and we think the problem again is between between this bulb somewhere and here, or even more specifically between this splice and this ground connection, I'm going to use my jumper wires just to verify that. So I'm going to come in here at point M, connect my alligator clip, come down here to point P, connect my alligator clip, and I'm going to put my wire on there so we can see that we have a wire. And when I connect these two, the light bulbs should then light up. And if those light bulbs do light up like they have, that again verifies or proves to us that we were correct in our diagnosis. We have unwanted resistance in this wire somewhere. And that's how you would diagnose a circuit using a voltmeter and looking for voltage drop.